Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. First, I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters in Asia, from your LCMS missionaries, from Pastor Ferry, the regional director, from the many missionaries who serve in the various areas of Asia, as well as the partner churches uh, and your brothers and sisters of all languages and tongues in the Asia region. They have asked me to bring you all greetings, uh, and so I, I bring you greetings this Easter day from your brothers and sisters in Asia. Today our text is the third reading, the gospel reading, particularly the passage where Jesus calls Mary by name. What's in a name? In the gospel reading today, when Jesus calls Mary by name, it changes her perspective. So what was in that name? What was in that speaking of that name that changed everything? I'll be honest, I'm not personally all that great with names. Uh, I have the hardest time remembering names sometimes. Somebody will come up and talk to me, and I will recognize their face, and the name is just completely gone. I feel terrible about it. I was like, I really should know their name, and it's just not there. It's just not coming. Throughout the three years I've spent in Asia, I've encountered all sorts of names, some of which I will never forget. For instance, I took a selfie with the real live Benjamin Franklin. I kid you not. He just so happens to be a Lutheran from the country of India. I met another pastor in the Philippines, uh, and I hung out with him a little while. His name is Fidel Castro. I hope one day to meet his brother, John F. Kennedy. I kid you not. This might be a little funny, but those name, but names are important things. In fact, the, the fact that we chuckle at these names a little bit uh, teaches us something about these names. We don't expect Benjamin Franklin to be a short, stout, dark-skinned Indian or John F. Kennedy's hair to be jet black, but that proves the point. Me names mean something. For many of us, our name serves as a mark of honor. We do not want to tarnish our good name, so we work hard, speak the truth, and seek to live honorably. We think of our name as who we are. So what was in the name Mary? As we look today on this Easter sunrise service, we read that passage. It appeared as though she had lost all hope. She stood at the tomb weeping. She even stooped to look in. And she talked to some angels about the body, of the, the, the body of Christ. Stop and think about that for a moment. She actually talked to angels, and yet she didn't even seem to notice. Almost everyone else in scriptures, when they talk to an angel, what do they do? They fall down on their face in fear. She didn't even seem to realize she was speaking to angels. She simply wept. Her sorrow prevented her from, in fact, even recognizing Jesus. When she asks whom he sought, she mistakes him for a gardener. Where have you laid him? She cries out. She cannot even conceive of the fact that he might have risen from the dead. She, like Peter and John, could not believe the resurrection. She doubted. She could not trust the word of God. She could not, in fact, even teach the, uh, trust the teaching of Jesus. In fact, I find that a bit surprising because all throughout the New Testament, Jesus is telling his disciples that the Son of Man must suffer, die, and rise again. And yet they just don't seem to get it. Mary stands there crying and weeping. And then Jesus speaks her name, Mary. And that changes everything. She went from inconsolable doubt and sorrow to belief in a second. In the simple speaking of her name, Mary, my Lord and my God, she declares, from doubt to confession, because Christ had spoken her name. She, Mary Magdalene, becomes the first witness of the resurrection. What's in a name? The power of God, that's what's in a name. Jesus, God saves. That's who God is. All throughout the Old Testament, God promises time and time again to vindicate his name. 
He told the people of Israel that even though they profaned his name among the nations, even though they lived falsely and, and in all sorts of sin and tarnished his name by their, their lives, he promised he would redeem his people and vindicate his name, which they bore, which he had put on them. And this is exactly what he does in the resurrection. He vindicates his name, Jesus, God saves. The resurrection is, in fact, the, mark, the proof of it. Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. He is the one who first passes through the sea on dry ground and leads us also through death. This is foreshadowed in the Old Testament reading when God used Moses to take the people of Israel through the Red Sea. It foreshadows this very resurrection of Jesus. In fact, in that crossing of the Red Sea, the waters could have easily brought death upon the people of Israel. These waters piling up on either side as they walk through on dry ground. Those very waters that saved the people of Israel did indeed bring death. They brought death to the, to the Egyptians. So also Jesus walked through the waters of death, you might say. But unlike the Israelites, God poured all his wrath on his only begotten son, and, in fact, Jesus died beneath the outpouring of that wrath. But he doesn't stay dead. He passes through these waters to bring life. And so now also Jesus, the firstborn from the dead, leads you through the watery places of death to new life. When I, one of the first trips I made after becoming a missionary was to Bangladesh. And I made this trip with Pastor Roger James. I was recording some of the work we were doing there in Bangladesh and supporting our partners or the church there in Bangladesh. And I took some photos as he was baptizing Bangladeshi families. These are former Hindus who had rejected their former way of life and become Christian. Around 30 of these Bangladeshi, Bangladeshis came to be baptized. Now, Pastor James, a wonderful man, doesn't know any Bangladesh, doesn't know their, their language. And so as they came up to be baptized, a local member of the parish who spoke a little bit of English would say their name to Pastor James. Pastor James would repeat it to him to make sure they got the name correctly. And then he baptized them using their name. Now, to be honest, Pastor James struggled a bit to get his tongue around some of those names. They can be quite difficult. But he did his best. And he baptized those Bangladeshis into the name of God. In that moment, even as Pastor James struggled to say those Bangladeshi names, God calls them to new life, leads them through the waters of death to new life. He united them to Jesus. He put Jesus' name upon them and united them to the death and resurrection of Jesus. If Jesus has not been raised, if his body had not been brought out of that tomb, this means nothing. You were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, you too might walk in newness of life. If Christ has not been raised, if his body had not uh, come out of the tomb, his calling of your name in the waters of baptism is pointless. Your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. If he had not been raised, Pastor James struggling to say the name of some Bangladeshis and splashing some water on them means nothing. But he was, in fact, raised. He has become the firstborn from the dead. And so when he calls you by name, just as when he called those Bangladeshis by name, he brings you to life. When he calls you by name in the waters of holy baptism, he seals you with his own name, just as he sealed those former Hindu Bangladeshis in the waters of holy baptism. He unites you to his death and his resurrection. In him, you also have died. And so also in him, you'll be raised again on the last day. It is my privilege to share this name, the name of Jesus, with those all over the Asia region. To support those who do this and to be there with those when this happens. I'm grateful for the support of congregations, schools, and individuals such as all of you here for this opportunity to go forth with God's name to the people of Asia. The names are quite different and perhaps even a little surprising. But in fact, our Lord has called the Benjamin Franklins, the Fidel Castros, the JFKs of Asia to new life, just as he has called you to new life, placing upon you his name and calling your name. 
He will, with Christ, raise them on the last day. You will one day walk into the gates of heaven with men and women whose names you cannot now pronounce, but whose names you will one day know, because God has declared them to be his own. And you will know them, your brothers and sisters in the faith, from half a world away. For indeed, God has in fact called you all by name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.